All right, on Sundays, I got another one. Five door frozen food case. 15 years old, 58 degrees. So once I get the bottom covers and the grills off, let's see what we got. Nice back there. Okay, let me stop right there. If you come across this and you see this ice in the back of your, behind your fans, that just sucks. You automatically know that you got to get a hose out. You've got to take the covers off. You've got to wash it. You got to defrost it, and you got to get all the ice out. And that takes at least an hour. And you can just hope like hell that you have a good working drain, because if you don't, it's going to take like three hours. And then this is a lot of ice too. This this is a pretty froze up evaporator. Most of the time you're gonna have trouble with the drains and that's what I've experienced so now after I've been washing it for about 45 minutes luckily the drain was working um, a lot of the ice most of the ice is gone I just got to check behind the, the back wall there to make sure that I'm not missing anything you see we've got some chunks there um, and we still got some ice along the back okay so now I got it all defrosted and I got it running so to try to figure out why it froze up in the first place, well, I found out that these fans stay running. See, right now it's in defrost, and the fans are running, they shouldn't be. So, to figure out why. So where I work, and a lot of you know where that is, uh, we don't get to have somebody show us how to do things or, or, or tell us how to figure things out. We gotta figure it all out ourselves. And I think a lot of places, a lot of businesses in the industry, a lot of positions are like that. I think it helped that I had experience in prior commercial refrigeration and then 15 years in residential before coming to the supermarket rack industry. I think that helped a lot. But this was all me just learning because I had only been with the company probably like eight months at that point. So I think it's useful to know that. First thing I do is find uh the switch that's keeping them on. To do that, I get an amp draw off of one of the fan leads. In this case, I can actually follow it. It's these wires right here. So, fans getting power from this right here. This is a 240 volt, uh, normally open and normally closed, three wire relay. The red wires give it power. It needs 240 volts to energize. It gets it from these two, these two terminals right here that these red ones are going into on this side, one and four, they're also going in back there. It's pretty hard for you to see, but they are. So power comes in. We have big lines coming in here. This is three phase, 240 volts. Two of the phases go, in, go into these right here, which these are fuse holders. I got the fuses right there. So I got hot power coming in right here and then the fuses bring them out to these red lines. These red lines go into this relay right here. This relay, if you look right there, if you look at the diagram on this relay, you can see the terminals zero and one are for the coil. That's gonna be these ones right there, closer to me, or the ones on the right of this video right here on the right side of the screen. So the left side is going to be terminals 2, 4, 6, and 8. So when the switch is not energized, then the power does not go across these four wires. You can see that when it's energized, uh, what happens is 6 and 8 becomes a closed circuit, 2 and 4 become a closed circuit, and when it's not energized, the circuit's open and power does not go through them. So this switch, the inputs coming into terminals eight and four from my left side, you see, I've got one of them pulled. Give power to terminals six and two, which go that way, and that's what gives 240 volts to one and four, and also to this little relay. This switch is a 24 volt coil. I found out that this switch is not working because when it is energized, it doesn't let power go between the two uh, circuits. You can see right now, in 
we've got 24 volts going into that switch. But what I don't have is continuity the way that I should. I don't have it. Ugh. I don't have it there. See? But I do have it on the left side. Alright, so the switch that I'm going to use to replace it is this one. It is a 24 volt coil. This is my see the diagram on it. Now this relay most closely resembled what I needed to replace, the part that I was taking out. So we should all know what these relays do, but for those of us that might not, when we energize the bottom coils down here with the required voltage, it's gonna send two sets of, of circuits, two sets of power, different places. We can have one normally closed, one normally open circuit so that you know they can do different things. Um, there's, there's a lot of different things you can do with this switch. Okay, so just like that is how I got it wired. And that's gonna do what this did. All right, so let's just recap real quick what that is. What that thing does, what that relay does, is it allows 240 volts to come to this relay, which when this relay energizes, it shuts the fans off and turns the heat strips on. Okay, so I just put it in defrost. So let's see if these fans stop with the rest of them. They did. All right, that's good. That's a job well done. Cool, new relay. Had to put a new fuse in too because I, I blew this one. All right, well, that's another coil washed and a 24 volt relay that energizes a 240 volt relay which switches between the fan and the heaters uh, replaced place to relay let's see let's check power here so our heat strip is, that we just connected or that we just allowed to be energized is pulling 2.32 volts i mean amps cool that's it I appreciate you watching. If you guys like these old videos and old video clips that I dig up from a year or two years ago, let me know in the comments. Like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, thank you for watching. Thanks for the support. And I'll see you all later.